It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Arthur Berger, who I'm privileged to call a um, colleague. I've known Arthur for about 10 years, and he's uh, basically set me straight every time I've gone wrong doing research. So he's a, a, a really impressive fellow. So um, Arthur works at um, Akamai, and for those of you who have taken my class, you've heard me um, harp about the importance of, of Akamai. Um, we've talked about overlays and DHTs and you know they're the and you know multicast overlays, all this kind of stuff. They're the ones that are actually serving all the content. When you go to iTunes and you get a, a you know you download a file, you're getting it from Akamai. When you um, when, you know when you watch Major League Baseball, it's coming from Akamai. Um, getting Microsoft updates. And the thing that I'm really um, <coughs> excited about in this talk is you've heard me harp about IPv6 a lot. Um, and IPv6 is one of those like call wolf, cry wolf kind of problems, right? And so the reason I'm kind of psyched about this talk is because you know it, it's not until companies are actually doing something that you know you know that it might actually happen, right? So um, I'm excited um, about this talk. So Arthur, um, in addition to working as a senior um, senior research scientist at Akamai, he um, is also an affiliate at MIT in the Advanced uh, Network Architecture Group. Um, he received his PhD in um, applied mathematics from Harvard, so um, you can go toe to toe with him on your stats. And then worked at Bell Labs um, from 1983 until 1999. He's been at Akamai since 1999, and is um, an all-around really great guy. So. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, well, thanks for the introduction, and uh, I'm glad glad to be here. Uh, and I. Uh, I hope you find the talk interesting. Uh, feel free to ask questions. I have more slides than I know I can get through, so I'm just, I can just adapt. Uh, so feel free to ask questions. Uh, and uh, Rob already has mentioned IPv6 to you. I would like to give some background in case you don't. I have one slide in background. Um, and if you heard about, if you haven't heard anything about IPv6, or if you have in the past, the natural question is, why are you interested in it? Um, and why one would have that attitude is that this is a replacement protocol, was defined in the mid-90s. People have been excited about it initially and on and off, but basically nothing has happened um, until roughly now. Um, and. Uh, and the reason why something is happening now is because E4 addresses are starting to get tight. And let me go to a slideshow here. And so people have been talking about V4 address space exhausting. They've been doing it for a long time. That was the original motivation for this new protocol back uh, in the early 90s. Um, and it's only as of this year, actually in February, that IANA uh, allocated the last of the slash eight V4 addresses to the regional registries. Um, uh, the regional registries are starting to get tight. Um, the Asian registry, APNIC, is the one that's uh, the tightest. It's now in a mode called hyper austerity. Um, <laughs> And what that means is they will only give out addresses, roughly units of 1,000 addresses, that is slash 22. And that's relatively tight. Um, and they're also denying addresses to some requesters now. Um, basically, they're favoring more access providers over hosting companies. Um, even in registries that still have a good amount, like Aaron, um, when a company such as Akamai or any company using addresses uh, applies and gets a grant, it tends to last at most three months. Um, so whereas previously they might give you enough addresses to last you for a year. So you're definitely feeling a pressure there. Um, there's starting to be a market for V4 addresses. Um, in part of it, this is one of the ones that became public. Um, this was part of the bankruptcy proceedings of Nortel, where Microsoft brought some addresses. Um, uh, this, uh, it, it's unclear what's going to happen in the future. 
Um, it's, what, it is clear that the status quo is becoming awkward. Um, and uh, although equipment has been made for a number of years now that would support V6 um, uh, and operating systems, uh, Vista, Windows Vista has it, uh, Linux has had it for a number of years, um, uh, the Mac OS has had it for a number of years. It was buggy, I think, as of 10.6. It's been largely fixed. Um, uh, it's, uh, you can ask, why, why isn't the transition just happening? And uh, part of, the, I'd say the main reason is all the back-end software um, and operations and procedures that have to be adapted. Um, mentioned at lunch, it's mostly related to the Y2K problem, where a lot of software was written that assumed the year just had two digits in it. Um, and there's a hard deadline there, of year 2000. Um, and these four V6 is a lot of software written assuming addresses are 32 bits. Um, and we really need to change that. Um, a deadline, like there was in Y2K, um, and so it's more as things gets more painful, companies are going to it the other way around it. There's a number of transition mechanisms out there now. Um, and it's not clear whether IPv6 is actually going to take over the world, if that's actually going to be the replacement, or if we get stuck in a kind of a more awkward technical solution. Um, so it's kind of murky. Um, so uh, it, messiness in the internet is something that interests me. It may be interests a number of people here. So that kind of messiness is intellectually interesting. Um, and uh, so one of the things that will be clear is that IPv6 and IPv4 are going to coexist for a long time. Um, certainly everything out there is not going to disappear, so there's going to still be a lot of v4 for a long time. Um, there is some V6 out there now. Um, the amount of traffic is measured in about in hundredths of a percent. So maybe it's two hundredths of a percent of internet traffic. Or it's, it's, something, it's measurable, but still very small. Um, it will, so, uh, everyone will agree it's going to be increasing somewhat. Um, certainly, I would easily think it's going to be in 5%, 10% range in a few years. Um, and the, so I would easily say over a 10-year period, both are going to be out there. Um, and then that gets to the last bullet item there, that there'll be lots of equipment that's going to be dual stack that'll have, be able to respond to both addresses. And uh, that leads to an opportunity to choose between them. Um, and part of the choice can be based on performance, which one performs better. Um, and it's that question that leads into uh, the topic I was looking at, a performance comparison between the two. Um, it's, it's also of interest to Akamai. Akamai is a company that delivers, con in part, content for large websites. And it's a natural desire for websites to be able to deliver content. So if it can make a decision for a given client, which is a better path to go from an Akamai server to the client, that's nice. That just adds to the performance. Um, so that's the motivation for this. I, I have one slide. If you haven't seen anything about IPv6, I have one slide on IPv6. It's, it's comparing the packet header. And the other thing I'm going to mention is the source address. So as you already know, the source address in IPv4 is 32 bits. And the source and destination address uh, is 128 bits. Uh, and so there should be lots of addresses. Um, so 2 to the 128 is a big number. Um, to, to try and get some perspective on it, um, if you imagine the address space in, evenly distributed across the globe, uh, including the oceans, um, then there would be about six, over 6,000 addresses per square angstrom. <laughs> so there should be a lot of addresses. OK. Uh, now on to the performance comparison. Um, 
Yes, 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 yeah, please do. Is it a silly question to ask no. like, what happened to IPv5? Uh, no, it's not a silly question. There, there is an IPv5. It's, um, uh, it's, it, it remained experimental. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it was designed for uh, a connection-orientated streaming media for video and voice. Um, quality of service over the internet. So it's, it's an, trying to do that is an old idea and still is an issue today. But so there was a V5, but I don't know of anyone using it now. Um, so here, this, here's the list of some uh, work that's also been look, com making a comp performance comparison. Um, we, we, it has, there's not completely consistent results. Overall, um, People have been finding performance on v v6 is worse. That uh, is higher loss and higher latency. Uh, not uniformly so, um, and particularly uh, when one's using tunneling in v6, which I'll, I'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, so the particular measurement study that uh, I'm going to report on first, I'll. I have done two, so I'll, this is the first one. We'll see how far we get. Um, so this was a study where the source was three locations in the U.S., and it probed uh, 7,000 dual-stack name servers that were globally distributed. And when I say dual-stack, these name servers had an address that was both V4 and V6, um, and it was period measurement was over eight about eight months. Um, and so here's I'm trying to give a little diagram of what, what a given measurement was. So think of it as an Akamai uh, server uh, that was sending probes, this uh, UDP ping, uh, from a V4 address destined for another V4 address. That was be one measurement, a round trip time measurement or a loss. And similarly, from a V6 address to a V6 address. Um, and uh, I kind of made a cloud here where it's, it's, people talk as if there's a V6 network separate from the V4 network, and um, it's sort of true, sort of not true. Um, the, uh, almost always, I, you can't say ever anything that's always, but almost always, if there's an interface on a router that supports V6, the interface also supports V4. So to first order, think of the V6 as a subset. The V6 global network is a subset of the V4 network. Um, there may be some routers that have interfaces dedicated just for V6, and that may be someone who's being very conservative and doesn't trust it at all, but it's basically it's a waste of resource because almost there's no traffic on V6. <laughs> so it's not, a, don't have a mental picture that there's a whole separate network of routers just for V6. Um, uh, now, it's a not identical network. It's not as if uh, all links uh, yeah, as I said, it's just a, it's just a subset. Um, an example, if you think of the, to the routing table, uh, there's the global routing table is about 300,000 addresses, uh, prefixes in it. And for V6, it's maybe about 1% of that. It's maybe it's around 3,000. So it's much smaller. So the, the routes is much sparser globally. Um, so a route might have fewer hops on it, but might have longer latency. It's more circuitous. Um, uh, and uh, and that's how you can be getting different performance across the two. If the, the routes are not the routes are not the same. Okay, so that's so let's look at some results now. Um, that's so, the only reason you get different performance. Um, no, no, and, and and I'll be talking a lot about that. Leading question. Okay, yeah. Um, so here's so here's some results. So again, this is again the source was three points in the U.S. grouped, sent globally, which I've now uh, grouped into uh, geographic regions. And this is some summary stats uh, looking at the median, mean, and 95th percentile of latency, and uh, comparing that what I got over V4 versus V6, and the the. Numbers here, if you compare V4 to V6, we're seeing latency is higher. 
on average in to other places in the US over V6 it was 92 milliseconds and it was only 49 milliseconds over V4 it was less so and the story here this this is nothing new this is what generally understood latency is higher over V6 so if we just kind of do a pairwise comparison down here you see across these measurements uh, uh, latency is higher over V6 and sometimes substantially higher Okay, so that, that meets uh, kind of prior expectations. Um, now, it, in, now to a summary statistics, um, here's, more, here's a distributional result. It looks, ah, uh, yes. Uh, what flavor of routers were you using? Backbone routers with flow-through processing, or uh, did you have fringe routers in the middle with uh, rewrites? Well, um, so th the, um, again, the endpoints were not routers. They were name servers. So it would be passing through whatever routers needed to get to to reach those name servers. And some of those names, well, becoming, your point touches actually onto what Rob was possibly alluding to. Um, the the where those endpoints are could be in core networks or it could be quite peripheral um, and so, you didn't know. so well I didn't I didn't know okay. and is and but we'll see some evidence of, of a distinction there uh, yes question uh, about uh, those results uh, could it be also uh, something telling to the um, quality <coughs> that we have uh, the, the, the excuse me could, it, could the latency results that you were yes. talking just now um, uh, testify towards the, the quality of, uh, of networks as we have? Typically, Australia, and I saw wonderful results in Australia, uh, is cited as, as a place where they have uh, much better, superior network than, than America. Even Canada in, in North America would qualify as, as a place with much better, better infrastructure. Um, so I'm guessing that uh, those results would, uh, would contribute to, towards that understanding, am I right? Um, so when you say, say Australia having better infrastructure yes, in particular, uh, to connectivity and uh, uh, yeah. the number well, of bandwidth connections uh, and much better uh, core infrastructure is considered to be uh, better in Australia than in the US. Uh, and, do you know anything about the V4 in terms of V6 within Australia? That the, no, I'm not, I'm the, not necessarily uh, connecting the, the V6, but just that the V4 was so good in Australia that, that would have helped uh, V4 looking that much better than V6. Is that what you're? That would be would you, yeah. So well, um, the uh, so let me actually go back a slide. So that um, uh, so like here with Australia. Um, the, I may have a, what's maybe hiding the effect that you're describing is that the sources here are starting in the U.S. So you only had to get to Australia to begin with before you could get to the better infrastructure within Australia. So here, the different, it, it's like here it's 210 versus 227. So it's, uh, certainly proportionally it's not that big a difference. But, and I think that's largely because the thing we're starting in the U.S. had to go so far. Whereas if I was just staying in the U.S., proportionally you're seeing, you know, almost a two to one difference. Um, I have some slides later on specifically on Australia that be, could be more relevant. Um, but let me just, so this was, these were summary statistics. Now let me get one layer deeper here, uh, some distributional statistics. So. So remember, I, from a given uh, location, one of three locations in the U.S. to some globally distributed name server, I did two measurements, one over V4, one over V6. You can take the difference in those two. So take, and so that number could be positive or negative, and that's what I'm plotting on the x-axis here. So I get one of those differences for each measurement. I can aggregate across those 7,000 destinations and then aggregate across time. I get some number of million and I plot a distribution here. So the x-axis, uh, here, here's zero, and it's plotting v6 minus v4. So on the positive side here, v6 was higher, and on the negative side here, the latency of v6 was smaller. So here v6 was faster. Uh, and I grouped it, indexed it by different destinations. So I think 
and pick Europe because the, it, I can, it crosses the axes in a nice way. So uh, if you're asking yourself the question of which one's faster, in general, if I look, put the point here, 0 to about 0.3, 70 percent of the time the, 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 where the mass is up here, um, we're showing V6 was positive, that was slower over V6. Part of the time it was faster over V6. Um, if you said, if you pick a range here, let's say minus 10 to 10, as you do, you don't care. If that level of difference, I, you know, I don't care about it. There you'd say there's about a 0.1 to 0.6, about half the time, half the mass would be within that minus 10 to 10, where you'd hypothetically say you don't care. Um, the remaining from 0.6 up to 1, so 40% of the mass, you'd be saying, yes, qualitatively, uh, V6 would be slower. And 10% of the time, you'd be saying, oh, uh, V6 is faster. Uh, yes? Sorry, two questions about how that graph was constructed. Yeah. One yeah. is, is that an aggregate across all 7,000 plus servers? And two, you can answer. The, the answer, yes, that would be yes. Yeah. The, the other well, again, still partitioned by continent. You know, okay. those in Europe, yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other question is, um, for each uh, sample entered into each difference, if you will, is that a pair of um, V4 and V6 sample that were taken at the same, uh, approximately at the same time? Yes, exactly right. It seem that as time varies, right. you're seeing a difference in behavior. No, well, I will be, well, um, well, the, well, I will be showing you some time plots in a moment. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, these, these two measurements were done, you know, within, within a second. So it's, so it's, they are close in time that way. Um, so here, what, and the other point I wanted to say here is, it, it can be a given destination uh, may be better for a long period of time, or not. So there's definitely a role here to be choosing, to making some judicious choice, as opposed to just say, well, V6 is always slower. That's too gross an assumption. Um, you can definitely be doing better than that. Um, yes. Yeah. I noticed in the subtitle it says aggregate of native fan tunnels. Yes. Are you, are you including like a traffic data tunnel from. The We're about. To, that's my next. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good observation there. Okay. So, I alluded to tunneling, um, and um, now I want to start splitting results apart a bit, um, and uh, the. Uh, he, he, uh, this is a diagram of one type of tunneling, a very popular method of tunneling um, uh, that, that you can set up tunnels in an automatic way. Um, and you can identify these tunnels by the address. Um, so that was, that was handy for me. I have these mentioned 7,000 uh, name servers, and by looking at the address, I can tell whether uh, a, this particular type of tunneling was involved. Um, so I'm going to uh, just say it somewhat, somewhat briefly here. So imagine you have uh, an, an area here that's an IPv6 island. This could be just a single machine, or this might be, let's say, a campus network um, that's not, that itself doesn't have v6 connectivity to the rest of the v6 world. Um, its internet service provider just offers v4. Um, uh, but nevertheless, it would like to reach some V6 destinations elsewhere, outside this little globe. And uh, this is a nice way of doing it. And, and, and it doesn't, it's not static, it doesn't require any automatic, any uh, prior configuration. Um, what you can do is any V6, with this, in this addressing scheme, anything that's not, that's V6 not destined for within this local cloud will go to a gateway router, which will send it to an any, a special Anycast address that's been dedicated for this. And this is the address. So you'll somehow, you'll Anycast to somewhere else, they'll go to here, <coughs> well, actually I should be, left that a key sentence. The, the V6 packet is then uh, tunneled inside a V4 packet. So as a V4 packet header is put on top of it, the destination address of that, pa v of that packet is this V4 Anycast address. Uh, 
then this relay will take off the V4 header, uh, deliver the V6 packet. Um, then for the return, the, the source address, V6, will have 2002 be the first 16 bits. Uh, and the uh, next 32 bits will actually be the V4 address of this router. So anything in this cloud here wants to send something to first 16 bits 2002, well again, use this, is, this is an anycast address. It'll go to some relay here. This relay will again encode and, and encase the packet into a V4 packet. Uh, it can know where the destination address is. It's the next 32 bits off of this one. Send it on to here. Take the packet V4 header off, and then it goes back to the desk. So that's, that's that scheme. And it's very, of these automatic uh, tunneling schemes, it's the most popular one now. Uh, and I can tell uh, whether this is present by looking at the address of the name server um, whether it had 2002. And there was another one, Teredo, which, which was not, not nearly as popular, but I could also identify. So now let me split out that previous table into tunneled versus not tunneled. Uh, and so again, the same geographic regions now. Uh, and I'm now splitting the set of name servers into two. Those name servers who had an address that was native, that is not one of these special tunnel any CAS addresses, and those that did. It was about two thirds were in this and about one third fell into this category. And I'm just showing the median values. Uh, the story is the same for the average and, and quantile. Um, and there's some interesting things here. So first let me say some of the less interesting things. Um, if I again compare V4 versus V6, um, you'll see, again, V4 is less. That's kind of not new. I mean, if I aggregated these two together, I'm getting the same measurement that I had before. So, and it, so if, in, in this partition case, I'm still seeing the same thing. V4 is still higher in these aggregates of median. Um, if I compare these two, again, that fit with prior results in that when I went to a tunnel destination, that was higher latency. So 101 bigger, higher than 86. And you again, pairwise, you're seeing the tunneled one was higher. Uh, now, what was surprising for me is when I made this comparison over V4, compared the 57 and the 47. Um, and except for South America, I was getting that the tunneled one was higher than the native. Now, that's peculiar um, because what I'm comparing here is a measurement from V4 to a set of V4 addresses and a measurement from V4 to another set of V4 addresses. There was no V6 involved in this measurement. I've just classified the two different sets of destinations based on their V6 address. So um, that was confusing. Um, uh, it was, I did look back, it was statistically significant. Um, so the, 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 uh, it wasn't just random. Um, and when I started to look more closely, and this is where more work could be done if, if uh, there was a master student that wanted to follow up on this, is uh, that there was a bias, and this gets back to, I think, your question on, on routers, if there was any architectural bias here, that uh, the name servers that had these tunneled addresses tended, not exclusively, but tended to be in smaller networks. I'm guessing networks that might be lower down on the hierarchy. Um, what, I, what I use to distinguish is Akamai 
has it makes an estimate of load associated with a name server. That's how popular a name server is. And for those name servers that had these tunneled addresses, they on average were had much less demand associated with them. Um, and uh, in some ways, thinking back, it's not that surprising that name servers with tunneled addresses are, for whatever reason, are in some sense could be smaller networks, maybe lower down hierarchy, but that would be something to investigate more. I did this discrimination just based on the demand associated with them. Um, and thus that question when Rob asked, did routing be the only factor and why is it slow over V6? Um, the answer is, well, no, it could be that those interfaces that are tunneled, it's not just that the path is slower relative to native in terms of the route, but it could be topological that they could be in networks that are further away. And one way of trying to piece out the two effects of tunneling being a poor architecture, which I'm seeing here, with uh, the topology of the network would be to be looking at the V4 which didn't have any of the V6 routing as one of the components. Um, and then here is one way of looking at that. And this gets to time. Uh, there was a time question earlier. So here, here's a time history plot. Um, and so it's about, it's about showing the eight months um, and uh, latency on the uh, y-axis there. Um, uh, there's some gaps in the measurement. This, something like this straight line, like here, that, that, that the, no measurements were being caught there. Um, and so it varies. I mean, like one, an obvious feature here is that suddenly latency got high here for a period of time, for a period of months. So you see these long time scale things that are occurring. Um, but now let me look more closely on this. So there's four lines. Um, the first two were to the destinations that had a tunneled address. Um, and the second two were to those that are native. Um, I probably should just say, one, I, I, I don't want to talk about tunneling too much, but when I say native, that's based on this destination address. It doesn't mean that there was no tunneling involved. There still could have been another type of tunneling called six and four that could have been taking place. Um, it does, that's a more a configured uh, tunneling architecture. Um, uh, so uh, when I say native, it's relative to the destination. Um, the I don't know how much time I want to spend on this. Uh, so the idea here is, the, when I say tunnel destination, you know it's one of these um, uh, dynamically configured tunnels. Uh, those that are native can still have tunneling involved with them of a different type, and it'll be interesting to look further into that. Even though I haven't made that further designation, there's a nice distinction between these two cases that I'm showing here. So there's still more to be done. Um, uh, so now let me look at, if I look at the two V4, whether it was a V6 tunnel or, v, or, or V6 native, this is based on the destination. So that's that yellow and red. Um, and so this is when I, this, we were summing up, averaging or taking a median. But this difference here, where this orange is higher than the red, that's both to the, that's all over V4. And we're seeing relatively consistently a higher latency over V4. Um, and then this is between the V6 to the two V6 destinations, the green and the blue. Um, so, loosely speaking now, what I'd be saying is this difference where due to the tunneling of, of this particular method of dynamic configuration, the green being higher than the blue, part of that is due to the architecture of the tunneling mechanism. This any cast you can't expect to be as good. 
but part of that is also due to a difference in the set of destinations that you are going to between the two cases. Um, and that's being reflected in this. So part of this difference, I'm saying, is due to this topology architecture. Now, this is, you can, this also I'm playing, if you show this is kind of rough, you can't, this is not absolutely authoritative. You can see here this is much wider and here it's, there's nothing, this is tight, you know, this is very tight here. So this is kind of a loose phenomenon. It's not, it's not the whole thing that's going on there. But it's definitely a component. Now having shown something where it's kind of loose, here's another case where it's more evident. Um, so this is a case going to Europe now. Um, so again, here you're seeing, again, it varies. Um, unlike the one to destinations in North America, you're seeing something much more in sync. I mean, these lines are pretty much in parallel with each other. Um, the, and the difference between V4, whether it was to a, a tunneled V6 destination or a not tunneled, that is to a native, this difference here is pretty much the same as this distance here. So, and it's coming pretty much in parallel here. So what I'd be saying here is most of that, what we call poor performance to that tunneled destination of V6 versus native V6, I would attribute that to more of a topological reason than to the tunneling per se as being the cause of the increase in latency. If you look at a, I'm doing your time. Um, here's something at a finer granularity. Um, in the previous one was eight months. Each point was an average over 24 hours, was one point per day. So here you're starting to see, this is three days. Um, and if you look kind of close, you can kind of see a daily demand effect here. Um, actually, let me go back to this. If this one here, let me go back to this one here. One of the things that could make this thing in sync, I mean, this is this quite different than the destination of North America, which was, didn't have this nice effect. This probably is happening because of more of a common resource is that these things are sharing, like the transoceanic links uh, across the Atlantic, that where they can be getting congested for, and this is, this is a period of almost a month here. Um, so uh, it's probably a commonality, commonality, commonality in uh, constraining resources that's causing that uh, sinking up. That, that bubble. This like here? It makes, that seems appropriate for, for a major uh, infrastructure change being made. I'm curious of the October. Yeah, why this is. Major swings within a day or so. Yeah, so. Um, How would you account for that? Uh, I don't, and I don't, I, tell me your account for this. I don't have an account. Well, it seems like every uh, city uh, maybe a, a major change in some infrastructure piece where they're cutting over from one transatlantic cable to another. Oh, and it could take that long to do that. Right, so you have uh, a certain amount of resources are no longer available for that period of time. But I, the, the uh, dramatic swings from one day to another there at the end of October, unless uh, this data was collected in, in uh, 01, uh, uh, you know, that would be a response to it. Oh, no, no, this, is, this was 2010. Okay, this, so yeah, oh, the old one is the date of the month. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Year, if yeah. It, it, you know, yeah. that would make sense. You had yeah. so much going on, so, so much turmoil going on. But no, it was that's an awful big swing day to day. Yeah. Um, uh, through that October time frame, September, October time frame. Um, uh, Wasn't I, I, I don't have an explanation for it, but I'd say it's not unusual. When, when I look at... Thing, you know, Akamai looks at things going on in the internet all over the place, and you can often, f any place you'll be finding things like this. Uh, there was somewhere that, my, my but, colleague advised me that these are, are 
basically DNS uh, queries only? This is the only type of packet that was being used for this? Um, it, it was probes to name servers. So the, it wasn't a DNS query. It was, it was a ping to a name server. So we could rule out anything having to do with fragmentation that would cause differences. Cor that's correct. Across the networks, especially when you were tunneling. Yeah, it was not. There was, wasn't so fragmentation. The question then comes up. Are these name servers, can you, can you ensure that the name server that the ping went to was the same name server? Did, it go, did the ping go by, by host name or did it go by an IP address? How did you ensure that it was an IPv6 uh, entry that was being queried as opposed to an IP address? Well, well, uh, well, I uh, mentioned that maybe earlier in the talk. Yeah, so it, it was to an address, not, not, not to a, a, a domain. And um, so it wasn't, so there wasn't the lookup issue and then we did a prior association that was able to pair up the this v4 address of a name server to a v6 address of a name server we have a mechanism for pairing those two up and it has nothing to do with the actual process and within the dns server itself well, other than how it responds to pings yeah 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 right uh, yes i've seen in the last year during some political altercation that there was a cable in the Mediterranean that was cut yes. accidentally? E uh, yes, yes. And would that correspond? To that? Um, no, I, I uh, actually I, that was something I had looked at. It, it was, uh, it did not affect in, in any significant way U.S. to Europe. Um, it, uh, it was very dramatic if from India to Europe. Mm -hmm. In some cases, it just almost went to zero. Um, I was just thinking of yeah. some load balancing and the rest of the infrastructure. This, this, this could be, a, a, this wasn't cable, but this, this is, looks like an imbalance in kind of a load balancing question or, or changes in routing or something. Uh, uh, I don't have an explanation for it. I'm just hypothesizing. Uh -huh. After the two trace routes, immediately after Well, no, no, so trace routes were not done. So that's still, there's a lot more that c could be done here. In this, this, so, and particularly in terms of when I said these networks, these, these, these uh, name servers with the tunnel address on them, 2002, as being lower down in the topology, that was a, that's something you could discover. You can find the AS in the room. You can find out what number of address spaces owned by the AS. So that's something that I feel is a nice open problem, you know, very tangible problem to play with. Um, so now I'm looking at finer time scale. Here you're seeing a bit of day-to-day -day demand. You're still seeing the uh, that that spread that we saw before. And let me show some other things that can be happening. Um, so this now is one to Asia. Again, uh, over uh, a three-day period. Um, and having shown the previous ones, what's unusual about this one is this blue one's kind of flat. So the, put that one aside for me. Again, you're seeing this day-to-day -day demand in the other ones. Again, seeing over the V4 ones. Again, you're seeing this gap here. And this was, in this case, this is what was surprising, that it was relatively flat going from V6, over V6, to this set of native addresses. Um, and again, I don't have an explanation, you know, definitive one for that, but it certainly looks like it's a different routing. That what was uh, constraining the others was not constraining this one. That there, I mentioned how the V6 routing infrastructure is much thinner. So it looked like in getting from the US to Asia, at least to this relatively large set of V6 native addresses, you were passing on a path that was uncongested. Um, and uh, it's, it wasn't true always, by the way. These things change. If I were to pick another three-day interval, you could see a different pattern. So it's not true that this was true for all three-day intervals. But you can, this sometimes can be just clues on what's happening. Here's another one that's kind of the opposite of that one. So this now is to Africa. Uh, and 
if I ignore the jig, I'm going to be kind of gross here. I mean, let's ignore the jigginess of the red line here. Here we're seeing one, just this green one, that has a very clear daily demand pattern to it over these three days. Um, uh, and these were relatively flat, and the red one, again, having some variation. So again, in this case, it looked like that any, that to that router, or the, to that relay getting to the V6 tunneled destination, we're going in any cast there, that uh, that was getting congested. Whatever that any, any cast path was, that was clearly seeing congestion. Uh, so there are some p t clues into the different routing that was going on. I have a bit more time, good. Um, let me show a little bit of another study. This one's ongoing. Um, Akamai does probes between its own servers and lots of other stuff. Um, and Akamai is expanding its V6 deployment. Um, and at the time I did this, it had these dual stack servers, servers with both V4, V6 native connectivity and 350 network pairs, networks so that as in a city we can be on a couple of different networks. Uh, we were in 50 countries. Um, all the interfaces are native, so I don't have this tunneling part to this study. And the measurements are taken once a minute, and it's ongoing. Um, and then this can give you a sense of how routing can be different. So I've kind of picked out some cases where uh, you're seeing clear differences in routing. Um, this was over a week in June. Um, June 8th was World IPv6 Day, and I was focusing on that. And basically, uh, things went well on IPv6 Day, um, and in the sense of concerns about brokenness of IPv6. But the amount of traffic was still very small. In terms of any performance impairments of latency loss, you couldn't s tell it different from other days. Um, uh, so anyway, I was looking at that. I saw here I'm expanding out across the week. And uh, this is a case, I'm looking at two networks, both in Chicago. So these are Akamai servers, both lake, located in the metropolitan Chicago area, but on different networks. Um, and I'm showing V4 and V6. And what you're seeing here over V6, for a period of time, clearly a route change here was happening. Um, uh, V4 just stayed low. We were just staying in the metropolitan area. Um, and in this case, I was checking the route, I, and I forget where it went. I think it, maybe it was Seattle, through Seattle. Um, but it lasted, and then, then it just changed. And it's not always over V6. I can easily find examples where it goes the other way. Um, here was one in Milan. Again, okay, so it's Akamai servers in Milan area, but on two different networks. Uh, and here, V4 had substantially larger la latency. Clearly, you, these two networks over V4 were not peering in Milan. Um, yes and no. Went back and forth. Uh, I have results on, all of this house had results on loss, but I, we don't really have time to go through all of them. Um, so here, here is one on loss. Again, similar story. Um, this was, let's say, this is between Atlanta and Paris. Uh, and we're seeing loss is terrible over V6. Just about all the time. And over V4, there was just a little blip. And again, I can find, it's easy to find reverse. Um, so here's one, this was Los Angeles and London. Uh, or again, you get, can get, find terrible loss over V4, not V6. So all of this is pointing to the idea that we'll have opportunity, there will be opportunities, increasingly so, to be choosing between the two. Um, and uh, there's definitely things to be gained by making a judicious choice. Uh, let me see here. Here's some distributional ones. Um, this is, again, this, you've seen an earlier plot of this. Um, here's kind of the major, con you know, Europe, 
North America, Asia, Europe, Asia, North America. Um, and again, it's similar thing. We've taken a difference between V6 and V4 latency. I had the same concept of we had before. Where here, V6 would be higher in latency, and here, V4, uh, uh, V4 would be higher, as V6 would be less. Uh, again, this is zero trade off, maybe some range where you're indifferent. Um, I think I might have two more. Here's a quite different pattern. I, here's one to Australia. Great. I think there was a the question on Australia. So this is focusing on Australia. Um, still going for a distance here. Um, but it was interesting from Europe to Australia, uh, we have the this zero point, this would be the red line. That had the highest one. That had a lot range there where it was better over V6. I think I show I have one more to show here. Yeah, this one's to South America. That was dramatic for me. Where clearly uh, uh, there was a much more frequently a better path from Europe to South America over V6, where there was the zero point. You got a lot of mass over here. Okay, so I was thinking there would be a lot more questions, but so let me jump to the summary now. So where I started this background, there's increasing pressure to deploy over V6, um, only because V4 addresses are exhausting, not because people are all excited about V6 as something better. Um, it's not clear how this is going to turn out in the long term. Um, it is clear both are going to coexist for a while. I wouldn't be at all surprised 10 years could be longer. And during that time, there'll be opportunities to choose between them and do some optimization. Um, overall, loss and latency are higher over V6, but not always, not for all locations. Um, so there's an opportunity to choose based on performance. And particularly when I was talking about the different tunneling uh, split of the destinations. Uh, there's potential insights into some network architecture effects, uh, not just the tunneling effect. Uh, okay, so let me, I'm going to stop there. Let's, yes? Um, so in cases where it was evident that there may have been a different routing path yeah. over pure native V6 or yeah. normal V6, yeah. um, did you follow it up with any measurements of available capacity or, or throughput along those paths to see if indeed that was an exploitable alternate route or if it was sort of a, a marginal? Yeah, uh, so, so no, okay. no. So, um, and uh, so there's definitely opportunity to do, to do, to do more with that. Um, uh, so, no. This, this is, you should, again, by my, this, this would indicate there's a lot more, this is a beginning field here, and the, things are changing a lot, the, uh, particularly with V6 ramping up. So, th so what I say today could be false in a few months, you know, it, it, it's, and so there's a lot more that can be done. Yeah. Yes? Are there, any, are there any other ways to tell if your, your packets are being wrapped and tunneled? Yes. Looking at the... Oh, yes, yes. So um, I, I kind of allude, I, that's kind of a subject I kind of just glossed over. Um, there's, uh, in my case, I could just look at the address to know if this the tunneling architecture of interest to me was present. Um, the uh, what, well, probably the one that's most popular is a static configuration called six and four. Um, and there you can detect those by looking at the path MTU. Um, it'll have a sm if, if the path would normally support a 1500 by MTU, these paths will be smaller because they're putting a header on top of the V6. Um, and there was a very nice article on, by Coletti on tunnel discovery. Um, they have a number of nice techniques on that. But path MTU is the most popular way of detecting it. Um, and. Um, but, and that's something ongoing. That's, that's these, this tu in tunnel infrastructure is something that's there, and it's changing. Um, and it's definitely going to be interesting to continue to look at. 
Yes. Are you talking about the work done within the working group, IPv6 working group, for you to work with community? Are you part of that? No, no, I'm not. It would be interesting to compare their findings. Yeah, so I think these, uh, I, um, yeah. I mentioned some of the articles. The, do you when you do you have something in mind in particular that was well, something that was different? As you know, it's, it's a whole research uh, platform still, so it's not commercial. Uh, and this graduate is uh, a part of that uh, consortium, and uh, we we have uh, connections with it too. So that that's my connection uh, yeah. related yeah. to the question that I was asking. Yeah. Uh, Canada and uh, Australia are usually given as uh, examples of countries that have far superior uh, network uh, than. Uh, yeah, it might be interesting to just look at source and destination within Canada, with the source and destination within Canada or within Australia. Um, uh, yeah. So that, yeah. So that and. Um, but I'm particularly interested, if you have in mind anything that was different from what I said, that would be, I, I like, yeah. And I know that they, have, uh, they used to have quite lively uh, research. Yeah. yeah, so it's, um, I mean, RIPE is doing this, APNIC, and a lot of people are doing measurements now that, um, a fellow Jeff Houston often is, is someone in APNIC. And, and in Australia, he's based in Australia, actually. Um, he doesn't see how many articles, but he has a lot of nice uh, um, presentations on the web. Where he's done the comparisons. And he's been looking at different. He's been looking at tunneling as as uh, one of the things he looks at. Uh, yes. So, do you see any upcoming trends or, or hopes and dreams of changes in technology? or policy, or another part of the pie that might affect this, for better or for worse, that either you're counting on, or that or, or that Akamai is afraid of, that it's, it's preparing that, oh my gosh, we think it, you know, it could get worse, uh, or, or is there anything that you can talk about yet brewing that you think might be a game changer to resolve this and more? Coming uh, in terms of the, resolve in terms of the deployment of IPv6, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, I I don't think it needs to be anything new in technology. It's, it's, it's not a technology issue. Um, the uh, in terms of requirement, there's the federal government has put out requirements. It has in the past too uh, of being of of various federal systems being have to be operating over V6. So. If that came to fruition, that that could be a big push. That could be a, uh, some sense a game changer. Um, the uh, one of the things that's unclear, where it's so hard to predict, is with these transition mechanisms that could be out there. And I've mentioned, I didn't mention things called carrier grade NATs, which is kind of it's an awkward technical solution, which could be okay. And maybe it'll be a transition, or maybe just get stuck there. It's hard to tell. Um, more narrowly, in terms of Akamai, um, the uh, uh, Akamai basically exists because the internet isn't better than it is. So, to the extent there's messiness in the internet, that's more opportunity for something like Akamai to give a value add. Um, and this fits into that picture. So, as I mentioned, there's reluctance to switch to V6 because of all this back end software stuff you have to adapt. That would be true of Akamai's customers that are large websites. And so it would be a plus to them if they can just stay on V4 but still be able to serve clients that just have v6 or a dual home to v, v4 and v6. And that's what Akamai can do. So Akamai servers can serve content over v4 or v6. It can serve it to clients that are just v6. It can serve to clients 
that'll do a home but take a better path in terms of that's the focus of this talk, a better performance path. And when it comes to going back to the origin, that is to the origin site, it can go from an Akamai server with V4 to the origin. So the large website hosting company doesn't have to do anything different. Akamai can handle this messiness. So that's nice for Akamai's customers. So it fits into messiness in the internet. It's an opportunity to give you value add by some other company. Uh, I was thinking of it in terms of, uh, you know, yesterday Amazon announced their new Kindles and their new Silk. Yes. Uh, the fire, was, it, was it a fire? Was well, it? Fire was the product. Yeah, yeah. So, browser field. Oh, yes, yes, so, Amazon's yes. Amazon's leveraging, from what I understand, Amazon's leveraging their massive uh, EC2 infrastructure mm. to pre-process their, their inherent uh, cloud computing capacity yes. to pre-process it. So from especially mobile devices, yeah. the latency that average people see can be greatly reduced because yeah. they're going to pre-process it and, so, mm. and just send it to you so yeah. your device yeah. and have you do it and transmit it, etc. And so, mm. you know, <coughs> We have yet to see how that's going to turn out, but that, you know, that's leveraging something that they're built, mm. they built it built into uh, in a corporate sense. Mm. And Akamai being so vast and and you know being this year being being your territory, uh, it would be interesting to see if, if you guys do something similar that would have such a you know, tremendous. Yeah. Well, the um, uh, so this is separate from the V6 before. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. So yeah. So Akamai is quite active in this. It, I mean, Akamai doesn't do any hosting. So it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't have a cloud sure. infrastructure where it is hosting content. But it has services in the category of application acceleration that's geared specifically for that cloud environment where a given company is using a cloud infrastructure to do some of its computation but wants the communication over the generic internet to be better back to its offices. Um, and Akamai will offer a service to do that speed up over the generic internet in between. So, and, and that's been a winner. That's, that's a high margin service for Akamai. Thank you. Yeah. So are you seeing <laughs> customer demand for V6? Like you said, um, or is it more to optimize like inter, you know, yeah. to optimize yeah. the, the routing interior to um, Akamai? I, I, I would, Actually, rather than customer demand. Okay, yeah. Before everyone leaves. Okay, <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. I wouldn't say it's demand as much as it is concern. Okay. There's definitely concern from Akamai's customers of what are they going to do if V6 takes off? Um, that's the concern, as opposed to them wanting it. <laughs> yeah. So Arthur will be around to answer okay. your questions. Thank you um, yeah, well, uh, yes, a number of Akamai's customers were using Akamai to have their website be on V6, where the content is being served from Akamai servers. So yes, so Akamai was in one of the, one of the comes also in the planning part of it. Yeah. 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 Jeff Dean, one of our PhDs last Hi, hi, Jeff. Good to meet you. Yes. Um, I'm very interested in your point of view on the really V6 from a security well. point of view. Because okay. I know that there's concern in the DoD of yeah. how is implementing V6 going to affect our ability to spot threats. Yeah. For example, there's uh, you can specify routing with V6. So you may be able to specify trying to get around firewalls and things like that. Yes, right. Yeah. So um, those are real concerns. I mean, there's there's the effect of loose source routing. That was yes. Yeah, so that's there. Um, another big concern is it has to do with these t regarding explaining the tunneling, which I didn't right. about packet injection. You heard oh, well, familiar with the tunneling issue, uh, spotting tornado tunnels. What, spotting tornado tunnels. Uh, well, it's not so much spotted. Here, here would be an example that.